Hello and welcome to another slice of Daily Bread. I'm so glad that you have joined us today. Today's devotional will be brought to us by Pastor Howard Tello. He's the pastor down at the Milton Adventist Church. Pastor Tello, welcome to Daily Bread. Thank you. Thank you. Now, as we always do before we begin, let's open with a word of prayer. Lord, thank you so much for your watch care over each one of us. And Lord, I pray that as we open your word, as we study what it has to say to us today on Daily Bread, I pray for your, your spirit to bless us and guide us. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Here where I live, the weather is starting to change. The leaves are starting to change colors. They're starting to fall. They're starting to litter all over the ground. And the first thing that comes to my mind is the holidays. Now, I realize 100% that we are nowhere near the Christmas holiday, but there is a biblical text that is the most famous biblical text that is mentioned almost 90% of the time when it comes to the Christmas season. Do you know what that is? If you guessed Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14, you guessed correctly. This is what the Bible says. Therefore, the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. Now for those percipient Bible students, you know that this particular text there in the book of Isaiah chapter 7 is connected directly to the book of Matthew in the New Testament chapter 1 verse 23. Where the same thing is uttered, the same thing is said, with the addition that Emmanuel means God with us. Now, of course, this has to do with Jesus, and this is the connection of Jesus. This is why many theologians and many Christians throughout the entire world have connected this verse with the Christmas season. But I submit to you that this verse has nothing to do with the Christmas season. This verse, with the understanding of the backstory, has an incredible message for you today. In fact, what is the backstory? The Bible tells us here in the book of Isaiah, chapter 7, verse 1, it introduces to us a man by the name of Ahaz. He's a king of Israel. He's a king of the children of Israel. And he was not a very good king according to the book of 1 Kings, chapter 16. He did that which was evil in the sight of God. He worshiped idols. He did a whole bunch of bad things to really dishonor God. And this is where the God of the universe shines. Because if there's any way to get someone's attention, you allow an enemy of that someone to take over and to devour and to destroy. But that's not what we find in the Bible when it comes to King Ahaz, where Ahaz rightfully should have been punished X, Y, and Z because of all the things that he did wrong. The Bible shares that Ahaz was granted the greatest sign ever given to man. So what is going on? The Bible tells us that there are two kings that are attacking the children of Israel. These two kings have built up their armies. They're getting ready to attack. They're getting ready to destroy Ahaz and his people. Ahaz doesn't know what to do. And so the Bible tells us that the prophet Isaiah comes on the scene. And this prophet Isaiah, confronting the situation of King Ahaz, tells him, this is what the Lord has told you. This is what the Lord is going to do. Now, let me ask you guys a question. If you were faced with a problem, if you were faced with a challenge, if you were faced with a difficulty, and you asked God for help, how many of you would be excited to receive the same sign that Ahaz received? What was that sign? I read it to you in the beginning. It's chapter 7, verse 14. This is the sign that God gave to Ahaz in his problem. This is the sign that God gave Ahaz in his, in his challenge. This is the sign that God gave Ahaz in his difficulty. He said to Ahaz, Therefore, the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. Now, how many of you would be excited in your problem, in your challenge, in your difficulty to receive this sign from the Lord? Be honest. I would not be. I would be like, my problem is these nations are attacking me. My problem are my finances. My problem is my marriage. My problem is my children. How is this supposed to help me? How is this supposed to provide for me hope? Yet herein lies the power of this verse. And herein lies what God gifted, what God granted unto Ahaz. He told Ahaz 
that in the midst of your problem, in the midst of your difficulty, and in the midst of your challenge, Emmanuel, God with us. The circumstances of Ahaz did not change. However, his perspective of the circumstances drastically changes when he accepts the sign God gave unto him, that in the midst of everything that's going on, God is with you. In the midst of their challenges, God is with you. In the midst of your difficulties, God is with you. And that perspective changes, listen to me very carefully, it changes the outcome of the circumstance, challenge, and difficulty, and its effect upon you. That's why it was the most powerful sign that God gave unto any sinner, especially King Ahaz. He granted Ahaz the ability to see and to know that no matter the problem, no matter the challenge, no matter the difficulty, God is with you. And that perspective changes the outcome of anything that's happening to you and its effect upon your life, your spiritual life, just life in general. So what do you think King Ahaz did with that sign? You think he accepted that sign? You think he embraced that sign? The Bible tells us in the book of 1 Kings chapter 16 that he didn't embrace that sign. He went to another king, the king of Assyria, and he told the king of Assyria, take like Pelazar. He told him, hey, listen, I like you, you like me. I scratch your back, you scratch my back. I'll give you silver and gold, and you protect me from these two nations that are attacking me. And that's exactly what the Bible says happened. This uh, Assyrian king went to war with the Israelite king and with the other king, and they actually won. You would think that they would lose because Ahaz rejected the sign that God gave unto him through the prophet Isaiah. But the Bible doesn't record that he lost. The Bible records that they actually won the war. Now, while they had won the war, Ahaz missed an opportunity to embrace the greatest sign that in the midst of his problem, Emmanuel, God is with him. May you not make the same mistake Ahaz made of old. May you embrace that sign of God, whatever you might be going through, whatever challenge you are facing, whatever difficulty you are facing right now. May you embrace the reality, Emmanuel, God is with you. And that perspective changes the outcome of how whatever circumstances are affecting you will affect you in the future. May God bless you. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for the opportunity that you have granted us to be here to listen to the sign of Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14. Bless and guide us and help us to embrace it, we pray in the name of Christ. Amen. Pastor Tello, thank you so much for sharing today's devotional. Amen. And we want to thank you for joining us here for Daily Bread as well. Before you go, we always like to leave you with a promise that comes from God's Word. And today's promise comes to us from the book of Isaiah, verse, or chapter 30, verse number 15. And it says, In returning and rest shall ye be saved. What a wonderful promise, friend. You know, there's lots more promises that can be found in God's Word. And I encourage you, as always, to pick up God's Word and some time reading, not only reading, but studying its sacred pages. Thank you for joining us for Daily Bread today. I hope you're blessed, and I hope to see you again tomorrow. Until then, so long.